Did you know if you give dog meat a teddy bear, he will play with it? To celebrate the Fallout TV show and the upcoming Next Gen update for Fallout 4, here are the best tips and tricks that you should know whether this is your first time in the wasteland or your hundredth. Let's go! Let me know any tips that I've missed in the comments down below so we don't help each other out. So I want to focus on not necessarily the obvious stuff in this video, some more complex things and just some like fun things that you should probably know. So we'll start with one, which is that you can actually change the color of your flashlight. It's defined by your pit boy text color in the display settings. So if you don't like the green glow that it gives off, you can actually change the color of your pit boy text. It will also change the color of your flashlight. If you are aiming at a wall in first person, you can peek around it by aiming it down sights. You can do this if you want to peek over something or to the left or to the right. It's a good way to keep yourself behind cover while still actually being able to shoot. When hacking terminals, you can reset your amount of tries as well as remove dud words by looking for these specific sections like the brackets and arrows that will highlight a specific section. By clicking that, it will remove dud words as well as reset your tries if you have used up a couple of your tries. It's good to do this if you have used a couple of tries, you're not really any close to looking for actually getting the right word to go through, remove all the duds, find the one that will reset your tries and then start again. And chances are you'll actually find the right word. You should be upgrading your weapons and your armor early and often. Most of your damage increases as well as your armor improvements and resistances will actually come from just upgrading your overall equipment. When you're modifying equipment, the mod that you remove from that item will actually be placed in your inventory. Now you can sell this for an extra couple of caps, but you can actually just transfer it to your, say, workbench if you're at a settlement and keep it in case you want to upgrade a different weapon and put that mod on that weapon. Conversely, the same thing if you find a weapon that has a mod on it that you want to actually use, you can take it off that weapon and keep it for later to put it on a weapon that you want. Now, all of this crafting stuff, as well as the settlement things, which we'll talk about a little bit later, all revolves around the junk that you find in the world. Now, if you're at a workbench, you can press T on PC or I believe it's triangle on PlayStation and I think it's X on Xbox to immediately transfer all of your junk into that container and you should be doing this at all of your settlements so that you're not actually carrying all that heavy stuff. There is some important junk that you should always be looking for. It's really three things, but one of them is significantly more important. Ceramics, aluminum, and adhesive. Those are probably the most important and some of the hardest to come by. And I will actually tell you how you can make your own adhesive shortly, but you should always be picking up those as well as cigarettes and pre-war money because they're great for just trading as they don't weigh too much and they have a high value to sell. Now, on your junk screen on your pit boy if you press c on pc you can actually view the raw components rather than that actual junk item so you can see how much of those actual components you're carrying and then you can see on the right hand side what of that actual item that you've got in your inventory is actually contributing to that amount and from this screen as well you can actually tag specific types of components say in this case ceramic aluminum and adhesive so that anytime you come across those items in the world they'll have a little magnifying glass next to them so you can make sure you always pick that up you can do the same thing on workbenches you can tag resources that you are actually looking for. So I mentioned that adhesive is really important and nearly every weapon and armor mod and like basically everything uses it. So Wonder Glue and duct tape are the main ones you want to find out in the world, but you can actually grow your own adhesive by creating vegetable starch, which needs corn, tato, mutt fruit, and purified water. Now, all of this stuff you can grow and gain yourself. Purified water can come from just having water purifiers at any of your settlements that are actually, you know, generating purified water into the settlement. And then you can grow corn, potatoes, and mutt fruits. If you go to Grey Garden, which is sort of to the southeast-ish of the sanctuary area, you can go here and before you even like got this as your own settlement, you could just go there and grab some corn, some potatoes, and some mutt fruit, take that back to your settlement, and then you can grow those specific fruits. So then you've got an unlimited supply of them and you can keep creating vegetable starch from any cooking station when you actually do need to. As in every Bethesda game, your companions can carry your burdens, but because you can command them, if their inventory is actually full, like you can't actually store any more things in them, if you put objects into, say, a container and then command them to go and take those objects, it'll actually bypass their full inventory and they'll still pick up those items. Some companions as well can actually pick locks or hack terminals for you. Kate, for example, can do lock picking and Nick Valentine can hack things. So you can actually command them to hack things, say, if you don't have the perks required to actually do that, or you can command them to disarm mines, like in the same way 
in case you don't want to get close and blow yourself up. You will probably collect a ton of companions throughout your playthrough that you won't obviously be using all of them all at once. So if you do assign them to a settlement, make sure you assign them to a task, right? Like, you know, for example, at the start of the game, you've got Codsworth that you'll get pretty early and you can assign your settlers to do things as well as your companions. So, you know, you may as well assign them to just do some, say, scavenging at a scavenging station, for example, right? To generate a bit more junk for you. Dog meat is definitely the best companion, not only because you can, you know, you can dress him up into collars and bandanas and armor and goggles and all sorts of cool stuff. But if you put a teddy bear in his inventory, he'll then get that extra idle animation, actually play with the teddy bear just when you're not traveling around sometimes, which is pretty cool. Power armor is a fantastic way to survive out in the wasteland. Now you will need fusion cores, just like in the TV show, funnily enough. And your fusion cores will actually like drain faster if you're using certain things. Say if you're sprinting, specifically sprinting uses a ton of charge for your fusion cores. Strong melee attacks and vats also drain it as well. Now, if you are fast traveling, it doesn't actually use any of the fusion core batteries. So you can feel free to fast travel around rather than just sprinting. Now you should be selling your fusion cores to traders before they actually run out as their value is the same, regardless of if the charge is at say 100 or one, it's just once the battery is completely drained that it is significantly cheaper. So if you want to make an extra couple of caps, make sure you're selling them before the charge completely runs out. And don't leave your power armor at your camp or anywhere with the fusion core in it as any of your settlers and companions might actually just jump in it and stay in it. So just be careful of that. XP and your skills and perk points are really important. Now there is no level cap here. You'll consistently level up in Fallout 4. So you don't really have to worry about say missing out on any perk points or anything like that, but you will need to make decisions around which ones you get first. Now, the further away you get from essentially sanctuary, the harder the game gets. So, so just keep that in mind while you are exploring. Now, while there is no level cap, you will need XP to actually level up and the more XP gains you can actually get, then the faster you level up. The simplest way to increase your overall XP gain is via your intelligence special stat. As the more intelligence you have, the more XP you'll gain. Mentats will also increase your XP because they also increase your intelligence amount. So a good example here is like, if you're about to say hand in a quest, if you pop some Mentats, it'll increase your intelligence, therefore increasing your experience gain. Therefore you'll get more experience from say doing that quest or fighting enemies, whatever it is. Well rested is a perk that increases your XP gain by 10%. You just need to sleep in a bed. Lovers Embrace is essentially exactly the same, but it will increase your gain by 15%. And in order to get that, you need to be sleeping while you have a romanced companion with you. Idiot Savant is a perk that will randomly increase your XP gain by three or more if you rank it up. For any action, now the lower your intelligence, the higher the chance of this will occur. So if you're not going to have a high intelligence build, you definitely want to grab Idiot Savant as a way to alleviate some of your lower XP gain amounts. But if you have a higher intelligence, you probably don't need Idiot Savant. Squirrel Stew can also increase your XP gain by 2%, which is something you can craft at any cooking station with a couple of materials. Now, I'm probably going to do a video breaking down all the best skills in every category. Let me know if that's something you want in the comments. But here are some of the best skills for like any build. Scrounger Perk is great if you want a ton of ammo, not only for yourself to actually use, but you can sell ammo for extra caps. Now, just keep in mind here for survival mode, Scrounger Perk isn't as good because ammo does have weight while in survival. Fortune Finder is great for any as well because you get extra bottle caps in containers all the time. It's only a little bit, but like when you're looting things all the time, that little bit definitely adds up. The rank three life giver perk will give you passive HP regen when outside of combat. And you can actually max out your endurance stat and get the ghoulish and solar powered perks as well. If you want more passive HP regen, as well as rads removal, they're a great combo to sort of run together. Bloody mess is the best damage perk early game as it's just a flat percentage damage increase. If you haven't decided say what weapons you're going to use, or you like to switch your weapons around a lot, bloody mess just gives you a damage increase for all weapon types. So it's great to grab and level that up. The lone wanderer perk still provides bonuses while you have dog meat as your companion. So as long as you don't have a human companion, you've just got dog meat here. The lone wanderer perk, you'll still get the bonuses to taking less damage as well as increasing your carry weight. If you're using dog meat as well, make sure you grab the attack dog perk as well, because it does give him benefits as well. Let's just do a couple of settlement tips here and things you need to know. So you don't necessarily need to invest heaps in settlements if you don't want to, right? Like the game does push you in that direction, but as long as you're hitting the minimum for say, you know, any of the specific like markers at the top, you'll be completely fine to just ignore those settlements. One thing to point out is like the defense stat, like as long as your defense is more than the food and water, then that settlement will be attacked less and it'll essentially like run on its own 
zone, it'll be completely fine. Walls don't actually do anything for defense. So you can like build them if you, you know, want for like cosmetic purposes, but they won't actually do anything in that way. Having water purifiers at your camps are fantastic because of the purified water that it will put into the storage, which you can grab to not only use yourself in crafting, etc., or survival mode, but also to sell for profit. Now you can expand your settlement build limit if you are reaching that build limit by dropping weapons and armor and stuff on the ground and then scrapping it or storing it in the workshop mode. And you can essentially just keep doing this over and over again because it assumes that it's part of the, like the build limit size. So you can actually just like cheat the system in that way and increase the amount of build limit that you can have on any of your settlements. When you're selecting something from the workshop mode as well, if you press and hold the button, you'll actually select anything that's connected to it. Now, this is important because you can actually use this trick to like connect multiple things and like like clip things a little bit into each other. Say if you can't get an object like in that perfect spot you want it, you can put like a rug on the ground, put the object on top of it, and then use that button to like hold the command button to pick up both together. And then by moving the rug, you can sort of like jimmy the rug in closer. And then once you've got that main object that's on the rug exactly where you want it, you can then just store the rug in your workshop mode. And then that object that it was on will actually stay where it was in your settlement mode as well, you can click on settlers to assign them to different jobs. Now, I highly recommend building a bell at any of your settlements because you can then bring all of the settlers to one spot so you can find which ones aren't actually assigned to anything. But it's also good for companions, right? Like I am awful at remembering where I put my companions. So having a bell that you can then pull everyone in and you'd be like, oh, you know, Nick Valentine's at this settlement. Oh, cool. And you can actually like grab them if you need them for certain things. So let me know any tips you have in the comments down below and what other Fallout 4 videos you'd like to do. I'm might do something on survival mode as it's like my favorite thing about Fallout 4. So let me know if you're interested in that as well in the comments. But thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.